So for designing the procedure you already know. So next is introduction to transaction processing concepts and the theory. Transaction processing is the execution of the queries. Okay. So if you want to execute any queries, what are the procedure you have to follow? So regarding that you learn in this particular model. So in this model you are going to learn about the what actually transaction processing means and transaction and system concepts, some of the properties of the transaction and characterizing schedules based on a recoverability and characterizing schedules based on serializability transaction supporting SQL. So first we will start with the what actually transaction process means. Transaction processing is an executing program or process that includes one or more database access operations. So here execution of the process that process is related with the okay accessing of the okay database. So for accessing that database you are including two operations. One is the read operation and another one is the write operation. These are the two operations comes under during execution. So read operation means it is the retrieval of the database. Okay, already data is created. So now you want to retrieve any database. That's what we call, we call as a read operation. Actually in SQL, select command is used to retrieve the database. Okay, so select is the read operation. Next is the write operation. Write operation is modify the database. Okay, so already database if it is existing, yes, you can modify that database. Okay, for modifying maybe okay, related with the inserting the new tuples or deleting the tuples or updating the tuples. So in SQL, insert, update and delete commands are used for write operation purpose. If you want to insert the tuples, as you are modifying your database by adding the new tuple with the help of the insert command in SQL you can insert the new tuple. In the same way if you want to modify the any of the tuple then update command is used and delete for deleting the existing tuples you can go for the delete. So these are the things what we call we call as a write operation. So here is a transaction. It is a logical unit of database processing. So here I take an example. What is that example? Bank balance transfer of dollar hundreds from a checking account to a saving account in a bank database. Okay. So here thing is what? Now I want to transfer the dollar hundred dollars from checking account to a saving account. So now this is related with which database? Bank database. So according to this, what are the, okay, if you are executing a program in a distinct transaction with a different parameters, okay. So this distinct transaction, first I'll tell distinct transaction means what? Unique transaction for each bank database here. So first parameter here you are used is what? Bank transfer program parameters. Transfer program parameters are savings account number, checking account number, transfer amount. How much amount you want to transfer? So that is okay, must be known by the one of the parameter. Which parameter hold that information? Transfer amount. So now we need to transfer from checking account to saving account. So for transferring that we require the account numbers here. Saving account number you require and check, okay, checking back account number you require if you want to make this transaction. That's why transaction is what it is, logical unit of database processing. How means what it is here, how you are relating the account numbers with the transfer amount. That is what we call as a logical unit here. So a transaction is a set of operations may be standalone specified in a high language, high level languages lab, SQL submitted interactively or consist of database operations embedded within a program, most transactions here. So in that transaction, so in earlier I taken the example as a bank transaction, bank database. So that bank database may be used by the individual bank here. Okay, they develop their own database application. So that is what we call as a standalone here. So standalone means what it is? That is applicable to that particular back only. So according to their requirement, they developed or designed the database here. One more is the embedded. Embedded means what it is? You are using the 
okay more transaction and which one is suitable for almost all banks here okay here it is suitable for that particular bank whereas here if you are using the embedded okay so that embedded with a program so that one it is what it is it is almost i'll create one application related to the bank database and that application may be used by almost all it is applicable to the all the banks here so that is what we call as a embedded here so in the transaction you are using the two terms one is the begin and the end here so begin is from where it started the transaction and end is the that is the thing so one simple procedure if i want to tell here transaction processing means so if i want to transfer the amount as the example i'll taken as a bank database so now i want to transfer the amount from checking account to okay saving account here so for making that transaction what is the procedure so i will send the request here so next to what procedure you have to do now in the this database designing you how to execute the program so that program contains what read or write operation so read operation as i told i have to retrieve the thing okay so now here what i actually i want to retrieve i want to know what is the checking account number and what is the bank account saving account number here so all those things already it is stored in the database now just i have to extract that account number so that is what we call as a read operation so to know the what is the account number account number of checking and the saving account numbers extracting or retrieving we call as a read operation after reading that what is the next step i have to do here so i have to transfer the amount in the checking account number i have to check the balance if balance is more as yes, is it possible to transfer the 100 dollars from checking account to saving account if balance is available then what is the thing i have to do now that balance i have to modify so same balance is available in the checking account and also in the saving account here so in the checking account 100 dollar must be deduced okay i have to subtract or extract that one if you are hang the 1000 as a balance here if i want to okay transfer the 100 dollars then what is the balance must be there in the checking account in that checking account i have to update the balance as what it is 900 in the same way so if i transfer means what it is in the account okay in saving account balance whatever it is there i have to add up with the this extra 100 here assume that in the okay in saving account also at present you are having the 1000 here so after transferring the amount from checking to saving account that balance must be becomes what now it must be added here it is subtracted and here it is added here okay here it is debited and here it is credited here so in credited amount balance must becomes what you have to update the balance so that balance updation is what now here balance updation is 1100 so that modification what we call we call as a write operation with the help of the write operation i am modifying the balance of the checking and the saving account okay so that is we call as a write operation and that procedure itself only we call as a transaction processing so in transaction processing system also based on the if it is the large database system so then you can go for the multi user database system here in transaction supporting system you can go for the single user if you are going for the stand alone so if it is for the large database system then you have to go for multi user so if you are using the multi user one thing you have to follow you have to make the concurrent transaction so concurrent transactions per minute okay so as i told in the okay using transaction processing database may be the single user one or it may be multi user if you are going for the multi user database system then you have to go for concurrent transaction so in the concurrent transaction you are having the two modes of concurrency so one is interlude processing and another one is parallel processing so in the interlude processing concurrent execution of process is interlude in a single cpu so you are using the simple cpu and it is 
concurrent execution is interlude. So, I will explain how actually interlude means. Okay. Next is parallel processing. Parallel processing or processors are concurrently executed in multiple CPUs. So, here you are using the multiple CPUs and here you are using the single CPUs. So, in single CPUs, it is based on interlude. Okay. So, let us see. This is the example how interlude and the parallel processing of concurrent transaction takes place here. T1 indicates the one transaction, T2 another, T3 and T4. So, by based on the time interval here. Okay. So, now here I am taking the example as a A. Okay. A, B or we want to execute at a time. A also want to perform the transaction and B also want to make the transaction here. So, in this one, it is performing the concurrency control. Concurrency control means what it is? Both will feel that I am the user and for both you are providing the okay, execution time slot here. So, in the time slot interlude means what it is? This is the time slot you are giving for the A. A transaction is not completed. Before time slot is over, you are allowing the B to complete the transaction here. So, even in this time interval B, if it is not completed, then you will stop and you will allow A to complete here. So, like this, you are allowing the both to complete by using the interlude based on the time slot here. A will complete according to this time slot if time is over. Assume that, okay, 5 minutes time is given for completing the A's transaction. Within 5 minute A, if it is not completed, then you will allow the B to do the transaction this time period if it is over, then once again you are giving time for the A here. This is what we call as the interlude here. So, for example, if I take the example as what online shopping, now you are also browsing for same product. Your friend is also browsing for the same product using the same app. So, both will feel that I am the user and I am, I am only user, you, okay, browsing that particular product here. And you also have that feel here, that feeling only what we call as a concurrency control. And at a same time, both want to, okay, uh, access the product related information. Product is same and both want to access the, that product related information at a time. Both will send the request now as a query. So, that A user also request is to access the product related information and bo both are sending the request at the same time. So, in that situation what happens here? So, it use the, okay, we have to feel that I am the user for that feel, feeling. What is the thing here? So, it is following the concurrency control as an interlude. It use the chance for A to access within that this time limit is completed, okay. If it is not, you will stop and you will give the time for B to make the transaction here. Within the time period, if it is possible to access the product related information, okay. Otherwise, you will stop and you will continue the A here. Like this, you are giving the chance to both, okay, to complete the transaction because both are sending requests at the same time. That's why you are not giving the preference for anyone here. You are allowing both to execute, okay, as a interlude. One more is parallel processing. So, both if it is sent at the C time, here we are taking C and D. C, it is transaction is taking place in the another CPU and D is at the same time, both will do the procedure here because here you are taking the help of the multiple CPUs here, okay. So, the, in this CPU processing, if it is takes place at the same time, okay, D is also processing the transaction. This is what we call as a parallel processing. So, this is your interlude and this one is the parallel processing. So, concurrent transaction means what? Both will send the request for accessing the information at the same time. That may be transaction for read purpose or for the write purpose here. So, for transaction processing purpose, a simple database model is used here. So, in the transaction, you are using the symbol database model. Database, what actually you know that database is a collection of the name data items and granularity size of the data item, a field, okay, data item value, a record or a old disk block here. So, in this one, okay, you are taking the help of the which model here as I already know that data model means what already, okay, 
concepts are available as an operation you can take those concepts to complete your transaction so one concept here you are using is a database database what it contains it contains the named data items data items are already named and collection of that one we are calling here as a database and one more you are using the term as a granularity or size of a data item granularity or size of a data item means a field okay field that field may be the item value a record record is the set of tuples or a old disk block here the database whatever you're taking no it may be the disk block here or it may be record or it may be the particular field here that is what we call as a granularity so assume that now already name for the data item is x here i want to perform the basic transaction processing operations as i told in the transaction processing there are two operations what are those one is the read operation and another one is the write operation items are already named so now here i want to read this item x here so for that you are using the one of the basic operation like this read item x read item x means what it reads a database item which is named as x into a program variable and to simplify our notation we assume that program variable is also named as x here so that variable name is also x and data okay what are the data it is there that name is also x here so read item it is what it indicates item x you want to read here so in the database also you are writing the variable name as a x and also in the application program also you are given the name for this item as a x only write item x write the values of program variable x into database item net x here so one thing you remember read item means what it is so in the database that item is already there in the application program in the front end you want to access that item here that is what we call as a read item x write item x means what it is so now you want to okay for this x earlier you are having the value some value now you want to change that value so now for changing that value in the front end you are giving some new value and that value how to update in the back end as a database okay here it is what it is you are reading the database item into program variable database contain the item you if you want to retrieve you have to extract that from database to that is back end to front end write item means what it is that item which item you are access now that item value you want to modify for modifying that what is the thing with the help of the application program in the front end you are changing that value and that modified value must be reflected in your database also that is the here in the right in the application program you are modifying the value and that value are updating in the database here so these are the two basic operation which are you are going to use in this transaction processing it is clear now okay